this small red ball can change a child's life. It can teach them about projectile motion, Newton's laws, basic math, counting, and arithmetic. It can cause them to be curious about science, engineering, and technology, and mathematics. How can such a small ball do such amazing things? Well, it's really quite easy. You just have to put it on the right track, literally. The rolling ball sculpture. Take a small ball, put it down some sloping track, and let gravity take over. Put in some twists, spirals, and fun turns, and you have a captivating piece of art. Add some mechanical lifting devices, gear trains, electric motors, and that piece of art can run all day and continuously. Add in some fun ball track elements, and all of a sudden you have a piece of artwork that can inspire children. Rolling ball sculptures can be small tabletop items for private collections. They can fill the expanse of a ceiling in an orthodontist office. So when you're sitting back in a chair, you can see the ball moving overhead, <laughs> leading you to be calm and peaceful and relaxed. <laughs> rolling, ball sculptures, rolling ball sculptures can also be curved pieces and part of the architecture. They can have multiple layers of complexity. They can have multiple different ball sizes going through it at the same time. You can have complex arrangements of devices to continually inspire children. Rolling ball sculptures can also be captivating artistic pieces in the aesthetics of the environment, containing many layers of complicated technology. Rolling ball sculptures are really an amazing piece of art form, but if you add some creativity, some curiosity, and ingenuity, all of a sudden, you can elevate them into a form that not only teaches children things, but you can also transfer knowledge over to people. For instance, we can explain the naturally occurring water cycle by using a lift to represent water molecules moving up into the sky, rolling across the top as condensation, and dropping down as precipitation. You can also represent scientific principles, such as projectile motion. In this case, the user can articulate a granite block, and as golf balls drop down, they can change the trajectory of the bounce, thus hopefully hitting some targets. Rolling ball sculptures can also explain complex systems, such as the multi-layered processor and a microprocessor of modern computers. In this case, you have the four individual chain lifts that represent the threads of the microprocessor, and the white and black balls represent bits of information moving through. Rolling ball sculptures can also represent fun themes and exciting processes. For instance, you can explain the process of taking baked beans from the farmer's field through the processing plant and into the bowl of a waiting, hungry consumer. So at this point, you've seen all these rolling ball sculptures, and they can fit in basically two different categories. You have the passive rolling ball sculpture, which is meant to just be part of the environment to be watched. And of course, you have the interactive rolling ball sculpture, where the sculpture itself elicits inputs by pulling levers, pressing buttons, spinning discs, or even waving your hands on the exterior of the sculpture. So you see these two forms of rolling ball sculpture and they can inspire children to be more interested in science. But one has to ask the question, just how much can these really inspire children to seek out the sciences? You see, it seems like children these days are really captivated by something else that can take all their attention away from them, and that's technology. Technology is around them all the time, everywhere. And more and more often, I see children swiping and tapping their way through virtual reality environments, simulations, and animations. Now, technology is a very, very useful tool, and it's something definitely that has a place in a child's uh, knowledge base. However, technology just can't do one thing. It can't provide a real experience. It can't give them a real visceral experience that engages all their emotions and causes them to be more curious about the things around them and science. So for this reason, we need to create a third category of rolling ball sculpture, a category I'm calling the immersive rolling ball sculpture, where we actually take the kid put them into the sculpture, and surround them with energy, surround them with motion, and let them be a part of everything going around them. That's a way we can create a lasting memory about these sculptures 
And that's how we can really encourage them to be more curious about science, engineering, and mathematics. So I present to you the first immersive rolling ball sculpture. This rolling ball sculpture is still a work in progress, but as you can see, it is, by all accounts, a standard rolling ball sculpture. It has fun track elements, and when it's completed, it will go to a high school in Omaha, Nebraska. As you can see, there's a void on the right side of the sculpture, and in this space goes something called a student module. The student module is a completely student-built section of the rolling ball sculpture, and each term, a new group of students gets to build the student module based on a list of specifications. They use their creativity and ingenuity to come up with however way to move the ball through the student module, and they use materials and processes that they know and understand. In this case, I'm using cardboard with hot glue. When the student module is completed, they simply take the student module, insert it into the permanently installed rolling ball sculpture, and allow it to operate continuously with the rest of the sculpture. This sculpture will be placed on permanent display in the common area of the eating area of the high school, and the students will be able to see the balls go through about at a rate of one every minute and a half. The students that took part in the student module, they get a sense of pride and accomplishment knowing that they did something amazing for all the students to enjoy, and the students that watch it that didn't take part, they might create some more curiosity towards the sciences that they didn't expect. But there's something interesting about the students that take part in the student module. They might already have an interest in science, engineering, and math. We don't really need to encourage them to go any further with this. So how to reach children even younger? How can we encourage a younger child where their mind is impressionable, where they can really seek out these exciting new things? How do we get to them? What we need to do is take the rolling ball sculpture, the immersive rolling ball sculpture, and bring it to them. We need to increase the size of it, increase the scale, put it on stage, Show them something just amazing, and then get them involved with actively working with the sculpture on stage. That's exactly what the Amazing Knowledge Machine does. We're bringing the, bringing the immersive rolling ball sculpture to them and getting them to impart their energy and their input and creative thought into the sculpture itself. But right now, the Amazing Knowledge Machine is really just a concept. So what I can do is I can share with you some of the concept of how I might do this. So let's go back to elementary school. Let's imagine us going to an assembly. You're excited to come out of class. You're excited about knowing what you might see, not knowing what to expect. And you enter the auditorium, and there I am on stage. As you file in, you notice there's all kinds of colorful shapes, weird-looking mechanisms, and strange devices around me. As I set up this, this machine on stage, you're noticing that it doesn't quite go together right. All the parts are kind of not connected. I explained to you, as I put it together, how the different parts work together. I explain how the energy moves from one part of the device through the machine to the other. For instance, there might be a large domino sitting on the ground right here. And as I stand that domino up, I'm explaining to the children that through my effort and through my imparting of energy into that domino, I'm increasing its potential energy. Now a student might stop me and say, but it's still resting on the ground. And I explain that though, I did, it, though it is still resting on the ground, its center of mass has increased in height. By increasing the height of the center of mass, I'm changing the potential energy to a higher level. When I knock that over and push the domino over, that potential energy is being converted into kinetic energy through motion, moving on through the other devices of the machine. Well, you might wonder, how can we get the children involved with this machine that I'm setting up on stage? What can we do to get them fully invested in this visceral experience? Well, over here on this side of the stage, I hoist a big sail over them, and I explain to them that that sail can move if we increase the air pressure underneath it. I explained that as that sail moves, it'll connect to a linkage that releases balls on the inside. So through their effort, they work together and they get that sail to move vertically. It releases the balls inside the rest of the machine to go power some other devices or act as triggers. Over on this side of the stage, we have a group of children. They each are holding a small, colorful ball. I hoist the basket overhead, and there's a track leading from the basket into the rest of the sculpture. I explain to them as they impart their energy into the ball and increase the potential of the, of the ball, it rolls down as kinetic energy to the rest of the machine to act as a trigger, or maybe a mass to move something, or maybe part of a counting device. So after I explained to all the kids how they all take part in the sculpture, we started off as the big ending for the show. So the kids over here, there's sails moving around here, balls are sailing through the sky, there's loud, loud cheering, they're really enjoying themselves and having lots of fun. And can you hear what's really going on right now? 
they're really learning. You hear them transferring knowledge. As they recall the devices I showed them on stage, and as they recall the scientific principles that make them all work together, they're making a memory. So at this point, this is where we need to really anchor this memory into them. What we need to do is show them something amazing. We need to show them something in a grand finale that they've never seen before. And you know, when I think about that, since this is a concept, I'm really not exactly sure what that grand finale would be. It could take many different directions. Now, I do have some ideas. I think I know of some things that could work well for kids, but we have to think the best source for good ideas for this might be the kids themselves. And actually, the kids might even have some great ideas of some amazing things to see at the end. And if I can elicit those ideas from those children and I can incorporate into the sculpture, then we have a truly immersive experience. And that is what the amazing knowledge machine does. That is how we can increase curiosity for science, engineering, and mathematics. And that is how a small red ball can change a child's future. Thank you.